everybody and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep tech video here on YouTube with me Tom. Okay so a little project I've been wanting to get on with for some time hoping to have got it done over Christmas didn't happen was a continuation of upgrading my Micro One kit computer which some of you may remember I did a video I believe it's around November 2018 where I replaced the internal Raspberry Pi which was a Raspberry Pi A plus original with the new Pi 3 A plus board. And this got me thinking, I've been truly inspired looking back in history about the early computing pioneers and those that had the first early domestic computers, such as the Apple II from the mid 70s, through to what was going on in the US and here in the UK into the 1980s. Those computer hobbyists who hacked their machines around, built new things, the little black and white cafe tube monitors, you name it, they were doing it with these computers and it was really, really inspiring. And that's something I'd like to try and recapture with my kit. Now, as mentioned, the Micro One at the moment is discontinued. The kit was discontinued about a year ago now. There are a few floating around the UK as well as Western Europe. And as I've said before, if there's sufficient interest, I would look at reissuing this kit. OK, so let's just take a closer look to remind ourselves what we did last time. So this is the basic kit. The lid, which is just Perspex, comes off. And then inside, we upgraded with the new Raspberry Pi 3 A plus board. We have an internal USB hub, and then this, which is an off-the-shelf keyboard, wired USB keyboard, there's the cable, and it attaches here. Now, the rear of the computer was very basic, to say the least. Simply two holes cut in the trim, these paper labels that have started to come off, unfortunately. You had a hole here, so you had the USB hub could fit here, and you also have space for a Cat5 Ethernet connection. This side, you simply have the three ports of the Pi board sticking out the side, and the SD card for the Pi could be attached here through this gap in the side of the unit. What I didn't have the technology to do at the time, but I would like to do today, is to replace the rear panel so we actually have a separate power switch and power supply plug, reconfigure the USB, and also create a nicer blanking plate here. Since first designing the Micro One kit back in 2014, a lot has changed. Mainly home 3D printing, which has allowed me to design new custom parts for this project. These first start live as wireframe 3D CAD drawings, before being put through a slicer program, which converts them into a printer-friendly format. These files are then sent directly to the printer. And so here are a few of the upgrade parts I'm going to use. First of all, the back plate. Let's bring that into shot for you. I've now 3D printed new cover plate, including, well, it nearly worked, but including white printed text, which is embossed plastic. That should say AV. We didn't quite get the V, but the V is there. And these are going to go on the back. I did one for the Raspberry Pi. And another plate here which is going to go over the USB. You can see it clearly labeled here, USB. It's going to be a new five volts mini USB input and we're going to have a dedicated power switch. Now, I was never too happy about how the original Raspberry Pi went into the Micro One kit. It used a series of nuts and bolts that was slightly crude at the time and the Pi was very uh, prone to coming loose. So I've designed this custom 3D printed mount, which is a screw mount. So you can fix through screws here or glue the back and any Raspberry Pi Plus board will fit by screwing down into these four holes here. This is going to hold our Raspberry Pi into the Micro One and replace the current system. As I mentioned, we're going to be using a new power socket here. So we're not going to use the one on the actual Pi board itself. So I need to mount another micro USB and for that, I have printed this tiny, as you can see that, tiny little screw mount piece. Again, you can glue to the back and it has two screw mounts for the USB jack to fit on top. And finally, we have here a gap in the top plate of the Micro One. This was originally to allow for the GPIO pins of the Pi to be accessible through the case. Now, not a lot of people actually use that function, and in this upgrade, I'm going to be using some of the GPIO pins internally, so we really do want to block this off. So what I have created 
is a matching orange uh, event piece in 3D print plastic and that will simply glue into there like so. Okay so first things first we're going to look at dismantling the Micro One unit so we'll take out the internal USB here and we'll also take out keyboard USB out the side internal socket on the hub. What I want to do now is take the board out. You'll notice some of the bolts are actually missing or the nuts rather are actually missing from the board which was a problem with this system and they yeah fall out like that one pretty quick. Okay with those out we can now carefully take our Raspberry Pi board out. So we'll be reusing that board so we'll put it to the side safely. And now what we need to do is take out the rest of these mounts here and take the screws out, which we should be able to do now. And if they're still a bit tight, just get a pair of pliers on. Okay, now I want to remove the USB hub. Now this is an off-the-shelf standard hub, but it's actually glued into the base of the Micro One. However, it probably will just come away with a little bit of persuasion, or possibly a flathead screwdriver. There we go. And we're going to take that unit out of the system. You may also note that some of the trim is a little bit loose on this corner. That's not a problem, we can glue that back straight afterwards. So we'll turn our attention to test fitting the new rear backplate trim pieces. The observant amongst you might notice the power switch hole is blocked by the current trim. Marking out the required hole, first with a pencil, a new opening can be carefully made using a craft knife. The resulting opening doesn't need to be neat, but does need to be a little larger than the required hole size. As it's no longer needed and falling off anyway, we'll just remove this old sticker. OK, let's fix the new trim panels. For this, I'll add a small amount of super glue to the rear, then carefully apply the trim to the main case, making sure it all lines up. While we're here, I'll use a few more spots of glue to repair that corner. OK, now over to the other side and a more straightforward job fixing on the second rear trim panel. And finally, not forgetting the vent cover on the top case panel, which fits in like so. Turning our attention to the Raspberry Pi mounting plate, I find it's easier to fit the Pi board first. This fits with four screws, one in each corner. The micro USB jack normally come in packs of six or eight, which needs to be broken apart before use. The jack is then also screwed onto its new 3D printed mounting plate. With a little bit of super glue applied to the underside of the Raspberry Pi mounting plate, the assembly can be fitted back into the Micro One case, making sure the Pi's DVI and AV ports line up with the new holes. Now the USB jack can be fitted, but first the area where it's going to go needs a little bit of cleaning up as there is some previous residue which needed a screwdriver to remove. Moving on, let's look at the micro toggle switch. This will clip into the power hole in the new back plate. I'm going to replace the old USB hub with this one which has four flexible sockets. Again, using a small spot of superglue, three of these four sockets are secured into the Micro One case. The fourth is connected to the keyboard and is kept inside the main case. For this upgrade, we're going to need some internal cabling. This will be for the new internal sound and power systems. For this, I'm using female to female pin GPIO jumper wire. I'll also need a coil of normal thin wire. 
The first thing we need to do is cut the sockets off one end of the GPIO jumpers so they can be soldered to the other components. If we look at this diagram we can see the GPIO layout of the Raspberry Pi. We can add the new micro USB jack which will give us a 5 volts in and a ground. We then attach a ground wire to this jack to pin 6 on the Pi. This in reality can be a little tricky at first. Next, we need to run a 5 volt line from the out terminal of our power switch to pin 4 of the Pi's GPIO. And finally, the 5 volts in of the micro USB can be attached to the other side of the power switch and hence completing the main circuit. I just need to remember to attach the other socket ends of the two wires to the correct pins on the Raspberry Pi. OK, so a quick look at where we've got to so far. A quick look at the Ichigo Jam GitHub page. And under documentation, it mentions the use of a pinout for sound generation. I didn't have a new mini speaker to hand. So I turned to my 1983 Acorn Electron part machine. Inside it has a small internal speaker. However, this was glued in, so it had to be carefully removed so not to damage the cone. Once out, I used some double-sided carpet tape to attach to the back of the speaker unit. Before finding a spot inside the now cramped Micro One case to attach it. I attached two more shorter GPIO male to female connectors, first to the speaker's connector, then to the corresponding pins on the Raspberry Pi board. With the new micro SD card inserted back into the Pi board, the computer was ready for testing. OK then, so we've made some fantastic progress so far, so the computer itself is actually ready. OK, so if we head over to www.raspberrypi.org, and we want to select downloads. We scroll right down to the bottom of the page and you'll find one here, Ishigo Jam Raspberry Pi version. This will take you through to a GitHub page and then we click on downloads and we have the latest download here as a zip file. Okay, next we'll insert our SD card we're going to use. Bearing in mind this installation will wipe the card if it's already got data on it, so make sure you back the card up or it's a brand new card. Uh, on a Mac, we simply want to go to Disk Utility and we'll erase this to start again, making sure to select MS DOS FAT format erase. So now we'll unzip our jam file and all we want to do is we want to copy this onto our boot directory. So we select all files, drag and we'll drop onto boot. And you see that it's copying the data across all 7.9 megabytes of it. And we can just check the files are going across there, they all are. Now, when using older analog TVs, especially for Raspberry Pi, there's a few things you need to watch out for. The main one is video standards. If we were using modern HDMI connections or DVI, video standards are less important, as most digital flat screen TVs can cope with the multiple standards used throughout the world. However, if you're going to use a more traditional analog TV set, it won't have the circuitry to cope with multiple global standards. In our case, Ishigo Jam Basic is normally defaulted to output an analog NTSC signal. Now that's fine if you live in North America or Japan, but I live here in the UK, and along with most of Europe, we use PAL as our video standard for analog broadcast. This little analog TV is unlikely to be able to cope with an NTSC signal, so we need to change the broadcast standard in the config file 
on our Raspberry Pi distribution. Okay, in order to check our configuration with the SD card on a computer, we want to open the main root directory of boot and we're looking for the file config.txt. We can open config.txt in any text editor and as you can see there's not an awful lot of data in there. So we can add a few parameters. Okay, I want to tell it which analog screen mode to use. New line and say sdtv underscore mode equals two and two will set it up for PAL. If you want to check out any other configurations you might want or need, you can go to elinux.org forward slash RPI config and this page will tell you all the different parameters that you can put in to your uh, config file for booting your Raspberry Pi. We'll need a phono to RCA jack to allow us to get analog composite video from the Raspberry Pi. Then it's simply the case of plugging in the RCA cable from the Micro One to the rear of the display or TV monitor. Finally, don't forget to plug in the mains power supply into the new 5 volt micro USB socket. Okay then, we're all plugged in and we're all wired up. This is a bit of an anxious moment for me. We'll turn the TV monitor on first. Give that a minute to warm up. Okay. And now we'll try the power switch for the first time. Oh, look at that, I think it's working. Did you hear that beep? Let's just type beep in. Oops. There we go, so the internal speaker we fitted is working correctly. Let's uh, see how this. That works okay. There's a bit of a cut off on the screen, so we could actually adjust that in the settings to give ourselves more of an overscan so it would fit neater on the screen, but that's that's really promising. So That's video two mode. So there's uh, video four mode. Which gives you this really large text on the screen. Let's ask how much, oops, how much RAM is free. There you are. 1024 bytes free on the system. I should be able to ask that to reset. Okay, cool, that actually works. If you're interested in Ichigo Jam Basic, I've done a number of videos on the subject which I'll put in the description below this video. Before I go, a quick announcement and a quick reminder. If you live in the southwest of England, UK, especially around the Bristol area, Myself, as Wi-Fi Sheep, will be attending the RiscOS Southwest show on the 16th of February 2019. Prices start at £5 for entry. It would be great to see you. I'm going to be there all day as I don't computer Wi-Fi Sheep. And we're going to have a number of projects and systems that you've seen here on the channel exhibiting there on a day, including this upgraded Micro One. Right, well that is just about it for me for another video. Thank you so much for your company. Hope you've enjoyed it. As ever, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you real soon right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Until next time, bye for now.